about six months ago, on the weekend of my 25th birthday, I had my first paranormal experience. My friends rented a suite at a casino in Vegas, knowing I'd always wanted to go there. It wasn't a surprise trip, since I needed to take off of work and pack for myself, but they did have other surprises planned throughout the weekend. But we wouldn't even have needed those surprises, because we experienced plenty right in the room. When we arrived on Friday, we arrived two hours prior to normal check-in, so our room wasn't quite ready. The front desk staff told us we could leave our luggage with them and go explore the casino and gift shops until it was, and that they would text us when it was ready. What the front desk staff failed to do was cover their radios when the housekeeper came over the airwaves. I need help in 117. It happened again. 117 was our room number, so the lady at the front desk saw the surprise on my face when I heard that. Nothing to be worried about, the closet door comes off its tracks and the poor housekeeper is so short, she can't put it back on herself, she said. I didn't believe that statement when it was coming out of her mouth, and now I know it was a lie, given what we experienced the first night in room 117. About an hour and a half later, we were alerted our suite was ready, and we could come get our stuff and bring it up. Not aware of what we were about to experience over the next twelve or more hours, we oohed and awed over the fancy suite and got settled in, before meeting up in the main area and popping open a bottle of champagne. Who is smoking in here? I yelled out. Cigarette smoke was one of my pet peeves. There's plenty of balcony space to smoke. I don't want it in here, I added. But everyone swore they hadn't had a cigarette outside, let alone inside the suite. Ugh, I asked them for a non-smoking suite, Kels. I'm sorry, my best friend Jamie said. It says no smoking everywhere in here, and there aren't any ashtrays or anything either. I must just be smelling things, I said. About an hour later, we split off to get ready for dinner. They had made fancy dinner reservations for Hell's Kitchen that evening, because they knew it was on my bucket list. As I was sitting in the bathroom, applying finishing touches on the most makeup I'd worn in years, the light shut off, scaring me and making me smear the bright li red lipstick I was applying from my lips all the way down to my chin. Not funny, whoever did that, I yelled, figuring one of my friends was messing with me. We had a habit of doing such things, as most friend groups do. But no one responded, and we were all terrible at pretending it wasn't us. Once called out for an offense, we always started laughing. In fact, I didn't hear anyone. They were all still off in their areas of the suite getting ready. Irritated, I turned the light back on and proceeded to spend 20 more minutes cleaning up the lipstick and reapplying a pound of concealer and foundation to my chin and neck, and reapplying two coats of red lipstick. Dinner was even better than I imagined it would be, and we stopped to have an after-dinner drink on the way back to the suite. We ended up staying out until after midnight, even though we were all exhausted from traveling. After grabbing a quick shower and brushing my teeth, I climbed into bed to scroll social media until falling asleep. It's a bad habit, but it's something I did every night. I knew I needed at least a few solid hours of sleep because the following day was my actual birthday, and the only details I was given was dress casual and wear sneakers for the daytime. Almost in a deep sleep, I was woken by a scream somewhere in our suite. Heart racing, not knowing if there was an intruder or if someone was severely injured, I hopped out of bed and threw on my shoes. Racing down the hallway, I realized the commotion must be coming from Kelly's room, because that's where everyone was gathering. What's going on? I asked. Kelly's freaking out. She said that she was in the shower and it felt like someone touched her on the back of the neck, Jamie said. It took us probably an hour to calm Kelly down, and Kara insisted she not sleep alone, so they set up a rollaway cot in her room. Back in my room, it took about an hour to get back to sleep. 
But again, I wasn't asleep long. The TV turned on full blast, and it was apparently left on a rock music channel. I scrambled for the remote and shut it off, but Kelly and Kara appeared before I even got it shut off. What the heck, Kels? Did you fall asleep on the remote? asked Kara. No, the remote was over on the nightstand. It turned on by itself, I said, heart still pounding. I'm beginning to think we aren't alone, I added. Do you mean a ghost? Kelly asked. Yeah, I do. I believe it's possible. I don't know about you guys. And I didn't even tell you guys what happened when I was getting ready for dinner. The bathroom light turned off as I was applying lipstick. And the lipstick slipped all the way down to my neck. That's why it took me longer to get ready. And I thought it was one of you guys messing with me, I said. I don't know, a ghost though? Kara asked. We sat up for a little bit talking about the possibility of the room being haunted, but we were so exhausted, we fell asleep right there. I wish the story ended here. So far, besides Kelly potentially getting touched on the neck, the other incidences were pretty mild, all things considered. However, this wasn't the end. What happened next, none of us will ever forget, and we're still affected by it months later. Kelly and Kara fell asleep curled up on my bed, one next to me and one at the foot of my bed while we had been discussing the events of the night. All three of us were rudely awoken when the comforter that was draped over all of us started being pulled off, and not by any of us. Kelly screamed, probably because whoever or whatever was pulling the blankets had to be standing closest to her at the foot of the bed. Kara and I were so scared that neither of us could make a sound or even move. There have been many nights since this weekend that all three of us have spent awake, on group chat, afraid to experience it again, even in the safety of our own homes. Oh nope, I've had some odd paranormal experiences, and a few creepy ones. But if I was ever touched, I think I would pass out. And then having the covers taken off? Nope. What a birthday weekend. Thanks for sharing your story with us. I hope you three are able to start sleeping better soon. If you have a paranormal story to share, email it to the address in the description below. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. Let's keep telling YouTube we're here. And with that, see you tomorrow, friends.